Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'll be staging my ice box, but first I'm showing you how I made my ice. Now I shaped my ice with Lego blocks and a leftover piece of marble sample. And what I did was I used hot glue and just filled in the cavity around where I put the little Lego blocks. Now, no worries, dolls, the hot glue didn't stick to the Legos, and it was a clean release from the stone as well. So, just use what you have around you, dolls, to make what you need to make. Don't make it hard. Don't make it complicated. I just had a few Lego blocks and some hot glue, and I made my ice. Now, you definitely could have made ice with um, resin, or um, there are a lot of different mediums you could have used to make ice but I wanted to just make it really quick and really simple and I wanted it to be a little bit soft so that my ice tongs would actually be able to kind of pinch it. I really love it. It turned out the perfect shape and it actually turned out better than I imagined. So many times dolls you just have to try different things to see what works. There's a lot of trial and error with miniatures but after you find out what works you stick with it. Now I really like the top of this piece of ice better than the bottom piece. I think I'll add a little bit additional glue to the bottom just to level out that bottom piece. But let me try it first inside the ice box. And it fits. It's the right width. It just needs to be trimmed down on the sides. Now I actually attempted to use my craft blade I didn't show it here dolls, but I did have to go get a different type of blade to cut through the really thick hot glue ice block. Now here I am leveling off that bottom portion that I was telling you I really wasn't satisfied with. So I'm just going over it with a thin layer of the hot glue and it'll level itself and be nice and smooth and then it'll match the other side. Now I'm going to allow that to cool. But see it leveled it out nice and smooth. It really does look like ice dolls. <laughs> so now let's work on the ice box. Now here's my little ice box and it was a really nice ice box and I had distressed it slightly when I first got it but it just wasn't enough. It still looked too new to me. So I got a little aggressive with my nail file around the edges and any of the high points of the door and the corners to really remove some of that top layer of the original stain because I want it to be raw wood so that when I begin to add my other layers of color they'll seep in. Now dolls I know sometimes it's really hard to watch someone distress really nice new pieces but to me for them to really look authentic and to really fit into my space I need them to look a little old. I need them to look a little beat up like they've been around for years and years and years of use. And after working it over really good with those files, I decided I wanted to add multiple layers of color and stain. And I started with some um, marker stain sticks. They're the kind that you use to touch up your um, life-size furniture if they get scratches or scuffs on it. And I'm actually using um, it's a brand called Minwax. And I'm just filling in, in anywhere that I scraped off the original color, I'm adding it. And I kept adding it layer after layer. And then I added more layers because I wanted it to give a rich patina looking color where it looks like it had years and years of use and years in years of summers and winters the wood expanding and contracting and hands touching it and and dirt and being wiped down over and over again so it took me a while to really get um, the feeling i really wanted so i kept playing dolls and added a little black and added a little brown and allowed all of that to seep in to the corners now i did have to leave it for a while to allow it to seep in you know sometime in these instances you can't just put it on and wipe it off. You have to let it sit for a little while to allow all the different levels of color to meld together. When your project begins to reflect what you see on the inside, then you know it's done. So I had a really funny moment here, dolls, where I had some little potato sacks that I liked, but they were way too clean and white looking. So before I started to add my deep finish, I used the little potato sacks and rubbed off some 
of the residue off of the ice box and caused the bags to look a little dirty. It was sort of like killing two birds with one stone, if you know what I mean. The bags look a lot better. And by the way, please don't kill birds with stones. It was just an expression. Let me show you the new ones. That doesn't look very realistic to me. They look a lot better and a lot more realistic if they were dirty. So I had to grunge up the other bags to make them match. Yep, dirty looks better. So let me arrange the little sacks in their little crate. So dolls, don't be afraid to naturalize things to fit into your setting. So now my ice box is all dry. Now look at that rich patina on there. It looks good. It looks nice and old. It looks rich. I like it a lot better than I did originally. So now I can get to the fun part of figuring out what I'm going to put in it to fill it. Now keep in mind, dolls, they didn't keep a lot of food in the ice boxes because the ice is always melting. So let's look at that ice. There it is. I've trimmed it down nicely. And it fits really well into the freezer portion. I do need to shave a little bit off the bottom so the lid will fit flush. Okay, and here I am. I've trimmed it down so now it fits perfectly. And even though I really like my little block of ice, but I was a little bit disturbed because even though it was the perfect size, it looked good, it doesn't look really shiny. I mean, even though it's a big block of ice, it would have a little level of shine because the outer surfaces would be melting. So I decided to put a little craft glaze on it. Now, although craft glaze looks white coming out of the tube, it almost looks like glue. But when it dries, it dries absolutely clear. This is the very same product that I used on the ham and eggs on the breakfast room table. So I began to look at options to put inside my little ice box. And I've got a nice little leg of lamb here and some green beans. I thought that would fit nicely on the shelf. But you have to remember, dolls, during those times, people didn't keep a lot of things that needed to be refrigerated in their ice box. They more or less stuck to basics like eggs, milk, butter, things like that. I have that piece of salt pork, but I'm going to save that for the table. So, dolls, I realized I needed to make some more eggs. So, I do have a nice bowl of eggs sitting on the cabinet counter next to the stove in the kitchen. But I'm going to make another little bundle of eggs to put inside the refrigerator. I mean, in an old rooming house, you'd always need eggs for breakfast every morning biscuits, muffins, and cornbread for dinner. Now dolls, just so you know, my eggs aren't perfect. They actually look like undersized mutated little Tic Tacs, but they'll work. The only ones that really need to look okay is the ones that are on top. And dolls, you know I don't believe in gluing miniatures, and the exception to that rule would be food. I will definitely glue food to plates. But for some reason, I didn't glue these eggs. I left them all loose. And there they are, all ready to be baked. But before I turn my oven on for 10 little bitty eggs, let me see what else I need to make. So dolls, in addition to the little eggs I just made, I actually had a lump of butter that I actually had made previously. And I also have um, a few milks and a nice bowl for my eggs. So I have a nice start because I didn't want to overfill my little ice box because it's not a lot of room after the leg of lamb. So there are all my eggs all baked and in the bowl. And these are the little bottles of milk that I had. They actually were from my original dollhouse. I've had them for a while, but they look a little bit plain. So I figured I would spice them up a little bit with some of my testers and metallic paint. So I originally was going to just paint the top of the lid, but then I got a little happy with my silver and painted the entire lid. I liked it so much, I painted all three lids and covered all the red with the silver. Now the little bottles look much better since I painted them silver, but I still wasn't happy with them dolls. And I don't know, I'm just on a shiny kick right now. I just felt like if they were glass bottles of milk that they should be shiny. So I put the craft glaze on those as well. I think I'm going to have to buy a new bottle of craft glaze. It's coming in handy for so many things. And I just put them on a piece of tape. And then I looked at the butter and decided it needed to be shiny as well. So I stuck it on the same blue tape and craft glazed it too. <laughs> so while the butter shine was drying, I wanted to check out those bottles. 
they look a lot better. The shine isn't a real high shine, but it definitely looks better than the dry wood look. So dolls, don't be afraid to enhance your pieces to make them a little bit better than they originally were. You'll really be surprised at what you come up with, and you'll really be surprised at how much more satisfied you are with your pieces. Now there's my nice shiny butter. That's the way it's supposed to look, but it still needs to be wrapped. But let me put the milks inside the refrigerator. I feel like they'll be safer there. And as I was playing dolls, I got another idea. I felt like the butter should be wrapped in something similar to cheesecloth. Now this was the little bag that was the leftover packaging from the baby washcloths. The washcloths I used to make the towels for the rooming house bathroom. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. But again, this was the packaging and I thought it looked like miniature cheesecloth. I wrapped my butter with the little bag. Now, I don't know if this is historically correct, but I thought it was believable. Then I tied off both ends with some burlap strands I had laying around. Now my butter is safe. And there's my nice little bowl of eggs. Don't they look nice? So now they have plenty of eggs for whatever they want to cook. And that's the inside of my ice box. I'm feeling really proud of this project. Actually, and just enhanced something I already had and just made a few little details and accessories to go inside. And there's my ice block. And dolls, like I tell you all the time, I play with my dollhouse and I play with my items because that helps me with my creativity. And while I was playing here, picking up my ice with the ice tongs, I realized I need somewhere to put those ice tongs. I don't want to lay them on the floor and I really don't want to hang them on the wall. I put my cube back into the top of the ice box and decided I'll just make a hook on the side of the ice box. So now dolls, you know I don't do a lot of measuring and in this instance I didn't either. I just grabbed my drill and just drilled a small hole on the side of the ice box. Now I didn't go all the way through because I didn't want it to penetrate the wall and break the seal on the inside of the refrigerator. I need that to stay cold, but I just maybe went halfway through the wood just so it would be deep enough for me to glue a piece of jump ring to be a small hook on the side. And that's what I did. I used a random leftover piece of jump ring and actually put a little glue on the tip of it after I bent it into the shape that I like. Now, dolls, in this instance, I did use the Gorilla Gel Glue because I want this to be a really tight, strong bond because I'm hanging metal hooks on it. And I used my pliers to press it in and just kind of adjust it into the shape that I want it to be because I didn't want to touch it and get any of that Gorilla Gel Glue on my hands. And I think that looks great, dolls. That's perfect. And dolls, this is just another simple, small enhancement that just makes your setting look more interesting because the tongs would need somewhere to go. And it's a very practical thing to have it on the side of the icebox. Now, I don't really know if people did that back in the day, but I think it works. I think it's believable. <laughs> now, dolls, after I added the hook, I was very satisfied with my project. I only had one problem. The door didn't close. Now, it wasn't resisting closing because it was too full. It's just that there's no latch on this one. My original dollhouse has an ice box as well, but there's a latch on it. This one doesn't have a latch. So I decided to use magnets. I had a set of magnets that I had purchased for something else a while back and never used it for that project. They're the perfect size and the perfect strength for this project. So I'm going to put one magnet just inside the door between the shelves and I am using the Gorilla Gel Super Glue because I don't want the magnet to come loose. And I'm just tapping a little bit inside the door and then adding the small magnet. And again, dolls, be careful not to get any glue on your hands. And after I felt like I adjusted it well, now dolls, I'm trying to Tilt it to the side so you can kind of see where the magnet is. If you look right inside the door, there it is. And so when I put the other magnet on the door, it'll catch it. The magnetism will pull them together to keep the door closed so it won't constantly fall open. 
So that was, these were just some other ways that I show you how plain will bring out ideas and creativity that you didn't even realize you had. Now, if you enjoyed this video, definitely let me know in the comments, like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So dolls, I want to acknowledge how honored and humbled I am at the fact that we're about to have 1,000 subscribers. That's more than I ever imagined when I started this channel, especially to have grown this quickly in such a short amount of time. One of the suggestions in the comments was that we should have a party for the dolls. Everything's happening so quickly. I feel like I should have done the dining room first. <laughs> you dolls just don't know how wonderful this channel has been to me to be able to share what I do with all of you and to know that you enjoy it so much. So I just want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers and even those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. Looking forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now.